Hello, welcome to Ham Radio Basics. Whether you've had your license for a while and just hadn't really gotten on the air, or you're new to Ham Radio and ready to make that first contact, this is the series for you. So let's see what we've got going with K5ATA Ham Radio. Okay, so one of the things that we need to know how to do is how to solder a PL259 connector onto coax. Now, the coaxial cable, or the coax, is what you run from your antenna to your radio. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to, I actually cut this off of a magnetic mount antenna, which I can already tell you, this is not high quality coax but the reality is if you buy you know for your first antenna you buy a some little mag mount antenna somewhere you're probably not going to have the highest quality coax so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it with this and the principle is the same if you have a better coax okay so first things first um I, like i said i cut this this end off of it already because if you're installing an antenna mobile or something like that into a car, maybe it's not on a mag mount, maybe it's on like, you know, some mirror mount or a hood mount or something like that. Either way, to get it to feed through some of your openings in your vehicle, that is sometimes way too big to get through there. Whereas that you can fit through. There are a lot of places where wires run through already anyway. And so the best thing to do is just go ahead and cut it, make your install nice and clean, and then we can re-solder a connector on when we're done. Okay, so first things first is actually trimming this back. So you can do this a couple different ways. Um, they make tools like this where it'll strip this back for you. I picked this up at a ham fest for eight bucks maybe um, but we're gonna go ahead and do it without that because a lot of times you may not have that so but you do have some kind of knife um, maybe not this kind of knife or whatever but you have some kind of knife a pocket knife or something so basically the coax consists of the connector and in this case it's an adapter and this is actually slightly too big for this this is an RG8X adapter and it's going on RG59 or 58. Okay, so what you do is you unhook or unscrew these and you get the inner piece, the collar, and then you have the adapter. Now, what I go ahead and do is, if you go ahead and look, this is going to install into this when it's on the cable. Okay, but I go on ahead and I, I put all of my other pieces on the coax before I even start stripping it because if you go through all the steps and whatnot and then all of a sudden oops you forget to put it on there you've soldered this end on here it looks fantabulous you're like woohoo I'm done and then you realize this is still sitting next to you don't forget put your collar and your adapter on the coax okay alright so what we're gonna do as we're going to measure it and like I said this is not high quality coax here so we are going to actually cut about there okay and you just want to take your knife let me get that so you can see it and slowly roll it do it on the cutting surface now that we've got that okay but you want to be careful when you're cutting it not to cut through inside of here is a shield okay and what you don't want to do is cut that shield especially on let me go ahead and close that up a little bit on a lesser quality coax because what you'll end up doing is you'll cut that shield and then you're starting from scratch again so just slowly cut through it take your time Slow and steady wins the race. And 
you'll see you start to get a little cut there. And just slowly cut your way around it, push down. Um, with a higher quality coax, you'll actually feel it when you start hitting the shield. With this other stuff, it's, you're going to have a few strands of copper in there, and then um, you're going to have like this tin foil shield in there, which pretty much sucks. Okay, and we're almost there. All right, so let's see if we got it. What you can do is, uh, let's see, I missed a little piece right there. When you start pulling it off, just kind of pull it, bend it around a little bit, see where you missed. See, it's still got a little piece connecting here, so just cut that. All right. Okay, and you can see I've got some strands of copper braid, then I've got that tin foil looking shield there. So, not the best stuff, but it'll work. Now, I cut off too much here, and I did that on purpose because. I would rather have a little bit too much that I have to trim off at the end than not have enough and have to restart. Um, a lot of people will sit there and they'll, you know, measure exactly this far, and I'd prefer just I don't mind trimming a little bit of the insulator or the center conductor off of there. So with this cheap stuff, you want to be careful with it, and we're going to fold it down on top of this and we're going to do the same thing with this tinfoil stuff and take it down and we're just going to kind of fold it down on here and just kind of twist it around here okay and then when we look what we're going to do oops we're going to actually want it right about there now we're going to strip this this is like an insulator some kind of air foam or poly foam or something but it's an insulator here that keeps the center conductor from cutting cutting or touching and grounding out on that ground shield um, these little holes on this thing are for us to solder through to hold it to this so what we do is we measure using this and you're gonna trim off just a hair, maybe not even a quarter of an inch, maybe above that. So just take your knife, same principle, you want to go ahead and roll it, pushing down on it. This part you need to be careful because you don't want to cut that center conductor. You really don't really want to nick it. Okay, and oops, where's that cut? There it is. Just slowly. Like I said, they make tools specially for doing some of this stuff, but when we're first starting out, we don't always have that. All right, so you can see it's starting to separate, and you just pull it off. Now, this is a solid core. Um, sometimes they're braided in there. If they're braided, you'll want to turn it, twist that around so it nice, stays nice and twisted. Okay, so we're going to take this shield. And just kind of wrap it around here so that when we twist the sleeve over the top of it, okay, you want to keep it off of the thread so that it'll close up well. Um, double check and make sure none of it's touching your center conductor here. Slide this down. Try to keep, like I said, keep. And you can trim some of this off if it's too much. This tin foil is. Not the best stuff in the world. Okay. And so now we've got this end on here. And what we're going to do next is get our helping hands. Okay, we're going to hold this piece here. So again, before you solder anything, check again. Did you remember to put your sleeves on the coax? If you forgot it, 
undo it and redo it now because you're going to have to redo it anyway. Okay, so with your soldering gun, or soldering iron in this case, get you a little solder. Okay, and this is another example of where being a little bit patient goes a long way. Okay, so let me slide this over so we can see here. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to let me turn this so I can get to it. A lot of folks just heat the solder up and dribble it down in here. That is not what you want to do. You actually want to let me get this a little closer. You can actually use this helping hand to kind of help you hold it all in place. Okay, but what you actually want to do is you want to heat this up enough that it gets a good connection down in here and you're going to I will go ahead and tell you also depending on the PL259 connector you get some of them are much nicer than others so you know I pick mine up at ham fests they quite often are in fact there's a guy I like to buy him from he sells on eBay too I'll put his link in the description below Real nice guy too. He'll uh, help you out, get you set up. Okay, and you're just gonna flow some solder down in here. Now, you don't want to flow too much. A lot of people will sit there and like try to fill that hole. Okay, and actually, I should have that facing kind of straight. But remember, you don't want this solder to flow all the way down into there where it's going to touch that ground shield down in there. But you want enough that it's a good solid connection here. So let's see what we got. And you'll see with a good quality soldering iron and good connectors and stuff, you're, it doesn't take forever to help your solder flow. I mean, it's boom, it's there. Okay, now, well, actually, I can fill that hole even more. All right, so the next thing is you want, even though this is technically touching the, the shield is touching the ground here. Let's see, make sure you can see that. Okay, inside these holes, you should be able to see the shield. Now, this gets a little tricky. This is another example of a lot of times people will sit there and just dribble solder down in there. But you really want it so that... Um, it's getting hot enough in there that it's actually going to get you a good solder connection in there. You want to be careful not to let it all kind of come oozing out. But let's see here. So let me get that one. Oops, kind of missed that. Let's see, and I messed that one up. I got to take that off of there. This is an example of, as you get older, it gets a little harder to uh, see everything. Turn that. And same idea here. Oops. There you go. Remember to clean your tip often. Let's see what we got. Mm, 
Okay. Oh, missed a hole. All right, so coax. Sometimes it's kind of hard to hold in place here because it's can be stiff. Um, if you're having that trouble, especially if you're soldering a bigger coax, oh, that flowed right in. You want to uh, maybe use a heavier set of helping hands or even a little vise or something like that will help. Okay, and now we've got the center conductor and the ground shield there. Notice that center conductor is just entirely too long, but that's okay. We're about to trim that up. Take your sleeve, bring the sleeve up, okay, and there we go, and now, just take your pair of snips here, and we're going to snip. that off. You want it flush. You don't want that little end sticking out of there. Alright, and that is how you install a PL259. This will actually just now, you know, it straight into the back of your radio and you're off and running. So, a lot of times people, in fact, when I first got licensed in 94, I was scared to death to try to take off a connector because I wasn't sure I could get it back on there right and this and the other. But it's not as hard as it looks. So that's it. Um, any questions or comments, comment below. Hit like, hit subscribe. We do appreciate it. And I, uh, that's it. Y'all take care. Hope to see you on the air.